Day 12, and the team are approaching Al Hashman, the last oasis before the desert. Water from a spring creates a green paradise. Here, the whole team meet their camels for the first time. They will be vital to the expedition, carrying the walkers' emergency supplies of water and communications equipment in case they lose touch with the vehicles. From Al Hashman, the expedition will head north through the dunes towards the desert and the Saudi border. The plan is for the team to spend the next five days getting to know their camels. One is the Abra, two is Halwa, Ariam, Samha. And with Arma's help, learn how to control them. We've all identified a particular camel that we're going to try and work with and just try and develop a bit of a relationship with that camel. It's a good training for us to use to the camel and also to the camel to use to us. Arma decides it's time to show the others how to ride. But to save their legs, all the walkers need to start riding. <laughs> Mohammed is the first to try. <laughs> and things don't go well. <laughs> Amr decides he'll try riding Mohammed's difficult camel to see if he can calm her down. <laughs> Trouble breaks out again. The problem seems to be that al Ariam, the camel that refused to get on the truck in Muscat, is upsetting the others. Arma decides he has to show her who is boss. By the end of the day, the walkers are exhausted and worried. Still, the camel not very happy. It's very difficult to ride them. There is too much to learn about this uh, beautiful animal, yeah. The team need to find a solution to the bad-tempered camel. If not, they'll never make it to Doha. The next morning, a decision is made. None of us, apart from Armour, are uh, particularly well used to working with camels. And, um, you know, we've had one or two incidents where people have fallen off and been thrown off because of that one particular camel causing problems amongst the others, which are quite nervous. So we've decided to, uh, to get rid of that camel. <laughs> But if it was difficult to get al Ariam onto the truck to come to the desert, getting her to go back again while the truck can still reach them proves even harder. And this time, there's no crane. The team may have solved one problem, but now they must manage with only three camels.
19 days into the expedition, and the team are about a third of their way through their journey. Around them, giant dunes rise up as the sun beats down. Today was a very hot day. Well, I didn't expect that it will be really hot. This is the most day. Everybody got really sweat. This is my most difficult morning since we started because I couldn't really walk uh, good this morning. And, but I did like 20 Ks with blister, which is really painful. Sim Davis takes advantage of the strong sunshine to set up the solar panels. These panels charge all our laptops, all our comms equipment, our GPSs, um, our radios. Pretty much everything that we need for our power comes off those three panels. Yesterday was, was our hottest day yet. It was rating about 7.4 um, for the output of the panels. So, yeah, it's getting much, getting much warmer. The team are now entering the heart of the Rubal Kali, where the dunes are packed tightly together. The walkers will be forced to climb over the dunes with their camels. It's going to be quite difficult leading them up the steep dunes, and some of the slip faces on the dunes are so steep that uh, in Thomas's book in Arabia Felix, they actually, they actually physically had to, had to scoop uh, paths for the camels to get up and over. To walk into nothing like Thomas did, there was no map to follow, and your job was to probe beyond that to see if, the, if there was a way through. I mean, th those people were quite extraordinary. At dawn, dark clouds begin to fill the sky. And when the team finally reach the military post at Burkhana, close to the border, there's even a little rain. The Amani army help fuel up the support vehicles. Crossing the dunes, they will need every drop. Well, we're taking on 180 litres, so we're full on both tanks. On the road, that gives us maybe 700, 800 kilometers. Um, and then in the sand, maybe a third of that. And there's fuel for the camels, too. Burkana is far from any village, but local people come to give the expedition a joyous send off including a traditional poem delivered with the help of modern technology. I had no idea that uh, there would be so much passion and enthusiasm for what we're doing. But, you know, there's a big part of Oman that we calculated over the last 19 days, over a thousand people have gathered in Majlis or meeting halls or around the fire, and, and that's been quite staggering, really. Okay, Hopefully we'll see you in Doha. In Doha. Okay, it's time to say goodbye to Ali. This is as far as he will go with the expedition. The walkers cross into Saudi Arabia, marked by the simplest of frontiers. Across the border, a new member joins the team. Sheikh Mubarak bin Khalut, the great-great-grandson of Sheikh Salah bin Khalut, the only Imani to travel all the way through the desert with Thomas in 1930. So, should we go to this or to this? Using his local knowledge, he will take on the role of his ancestor to guide them through the dunes. Where is Sinan? 
ليش؟ سنام 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 بير فيصل For Mubarak, recreating his ancestors' journey is a source of great joy. أول شيء الرحلة دي صحيح أني فخور بالرحلة والحين موجود والعائلة كلها فرحانة بأن بالرحلة هذية أنها تيددت استعادة ذكريات الأمجاد القديمة With the route decided, the team prepares for their first day's climbing. They're pretty big dunes out there. I think it's going to be pretty challenging with the load we've got on, but um, we'll give it a go. See how we see how we manage. The dunes around them tower up to nearly 400 meters in height, and they're frighteningly steep. <laughs> Each step, it's just like a kilometer. Really, really hard. And, but you know that you need to uh, continue walking, continue walking, you just push yourself uh, to the limit. When the wind drops, the walkers suffer even more. Ah, very hot. There's no breeze, that's why. And if climbing the dunes is difficult, getting the camels down the slopes is even harder. But the soft sand brings relief for Mohammed's sore and blistered feet. He's given up on shoes. I, I'm feeling really good. Walking with socks, no any shoes or anything. I just uh, felt a re relief in my uh, in my uh, feet. I didn't feel any pain, and uh, all was good. It isn't just physically demanding; it's a mental challenge too. If you read Arabia Felix and Arabian Sands, uh, the, 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 the constant references to the routine of the marches, the long marches, and that's what you have to grapple with mentally. It's a matter of uh, working with what you've got and being patient and hanging in there. Every evening, the team fill out forms recording their feelings. It's part of a scientific study about how people cope in extreme situations. At the University of Northampton in England, psychologists can use the diaries for research. We can track um, emotional profiles, so we can see positive and negative emotions that occur daily during the expedition, and the different types of coping strategies that they use at the start and at the middle and at the end of the expedition. It gives us information um, which can help us prepare people going into other extreme settings, and that might be um, potentially space travel with the, the idea that long duration space missions are gonna become more accessible in the future. Um, we need to know who's going to perform well, how they might respond to those environments, and what sort of methods we can um, develop to monitor their, their emotional states and how to support them whilst they're in those environments. In this inhospitable sea of sand, there are no people and food and water are desperately scarce. So the team need John and Sim to be in the right place at the right time. The walkers can go over the dunes, but the vehicles must drive round as fast as they can in safety. Deflated tyres give the vehicles more grip, but controlling their momentum to carry them up a slope without running risks isn't easy.
John and Sim constantly scan the sand immediately in front and further ahead for danger. But even experienced drivers can be caught out. The worst situation we can come across is going down a slip face and getting the angle wrong, meaning that we might sort of tip the vehicle and might roll the vehicle, catch a wheel and, and end up going down the dune like that. So when Sim finds himself in just that situation, he takes no risks. At the end of the day, Sim and John are there when the exhausted walkers come in. Armour starts looking after the camels, but he's worried about one of them. He suspects a broken tooth may be upsetting her stomach. If she doesn't recover, it could spell disaster. After a week of intense effort, the walkers reach easier terrain. Now the desert throws up a new challenge. For the last few days, it's been too hot. The wind's been blowing from the south. But uh, this morning, uh, the wind had shifted 180, and we've got a, a northerly wind that's grown and grown during the day. And it's now pretty, pretty black, and uh, navigation's quite difficult. And uh, the sky is merging with the sand, so it's uh, almost, in skiing terms, a, a whiteout. As the day goes on, the wind gets stronger. Even Arma is suffering. By the time they arrive at the campsite, the storm looks set to blow all night. The flying sand gets everywhere. My eyes up my nose, in my ears, in my mouth. Cups of tea help clear the sand from the mouth. But not for long. <laughs> the sandstorm blows on. By morning, the camp is half buried and the team are exhausted. No sleep, pretty sandy, <laughs> rolled over into sand. We have to cover all the sand everywhere. <sighs> to give everyone a break from the relentless wind, the team gets into their emergency shelter. A bit of sand flying around, so we've uh, just decided to jump in this emergency shelter just to check everyone understands how it works because uh, if it continues today and if it gets worse then uh, this will be where we take refuge. 
تسمع مقلق اه يا هادي تسمع مقلق كان داخل يلا مطر بيه The team dust themselves down and head on. The next stage of their journey is about to begin. The expedition is entering an area of the desert known as Sanam. The mountainous dunes of Dakaka have given way to vast plains of sand. But the flatter landscape brings its own problems. Thomas, in his book, uh, refers to the, the area where we currently are as a scene of utter desolation and an abode of death to whoever should loiter here. So our plan is not to loiter here for very long, because that doesn't sound too positive. Out here, deep in the desert, there are water holes, but they are hard to locate. To cover the huge distances between wells fast enough, the team must learn how to ride their camels better than when they first tried. Our, our initial efforts ended in disaster, really, to be frank. <laughs> you know, they're very, very healthy animals, but they're not perhaps as used to dealing with people on a day-to-day -day basis as other camels might be. So we've been reluctant to uh, ride the camels. We just keep our fingers crossed, try not to push them too hard, and uh, I think we're now at the stage where they're placid enough for a, even, even a, a, a naive Englishman to have a go at riding one of them. How do I say uh, stop to the camel? What, what noise do I make? Stop here, uh, camel. Stop. Say that again? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That one. Stop. Okay. Go. Ah, that's where I've been going wrong because I've. Is go. Go. What was the stop? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Stop. Okay. Okay. Up. Lesson number one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Up. Hold of her down there. Time for Mark to go solo. Ah, right, that's the hardest bit done. OK, John, take it away. That's it. That's the second hard bit done, and if you hand me that bit, this is the steering wheel. Steering, yeah? Yeah, steering. So, Armour, what was we stop, Armour? You forgot to tell me that. Right. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> hey, how... <laughs> After a shaky start, things settle down and long days of camel riding begin. Finding a well in such a vast wilderness is extraordinarily difficult. Modern techniques like GPS help but the team find it's actually easier to use traditional methods, like navigating by the sun. And the desert leaves clues, too. We've been able to hold a northward course without really having to use a compass, but by looking at these lines of deposited sand, which appear behind every, every small bush. And these lines... Uh, are drawn by the northerly wind that dominates here, the Shamal wind. So you can use nature to help you navigate uh, when camels don't necessarily help you very much keep a straight line. The plan is to get close to a waterhole, then pick up vehicle and camel tracks leading to it. But the slightest mistake, and they could miss it. So when, on day 28, deep in the desert, they find a well, everybody is smiling. Sim goes down to check it out. The water is good, 
At last, the camels can drink and everyone can get a shower. But the relief is short-lived. The next well at Terega is 100 kilometers away, three to four days march. The team must keep moving as fast as they can, just like Sheikh Salah bin Khalut and Bertram Thomas. The aim is to reconnect with his route uh, as soon as we can and then try to locate those wells that, that were so critical to him and will be critical to us too in terms of watering the camels. Camels do need water every, every third day and we physically cannot carry all the water that they need. 